Jackie, this is Greg. Can you call me as soon as you possibly can? Um, uh, we're, um, uh, my son and I have been involved in a shooting, and uh, I need some advice right away. If you can please call me as soon as you possibly can. Thank you. Bye. Now, that was a call made by convicted killer Greg McMichael to then Glynn County, Georgia, District Attorney Jackie Johnson shortly after Ahmaud Arbery was shot and killed in February of 2020. Now, that call and others have landed the former DA in legal trouble for allegedly hindering the investigation into Arbery's death. Now, Johnson was indicted by the grand jury for violating her oath of office, among other charges. Now, three months ago, she filed a motion asking the court to dismiss the charges due to a lack of evidence. Well, yesterday, the judge ruled he would not dismiss the case, clearing the way for a possible trial. Now, Johnson was the top prosecutor in Glynn County when three white men, Greg McMichael, his son Travis, and their friend, William Roddy Bryan, chased Arbery in pickup trucks and killed him. Arbery was running through their neighborhood at the time and had not committed any crimes. Now, after the incident, Greg McMichael, who once worked as an investigator in Jackie Johnson's office, called her for help. Shortly thereafter, Johnson recused herself from the case, but according to prosecutors, not before she told officers not to arrest her former employee. Now, two months later, video of Arbery's murder would be leaked online, leading to the arrest of the three men involved in the shooting, including Greg McMichael. Now, the call that McMichael made to Johnson came up during a hearing for the three defendants. Take a listen. Stage 18 is the voicemail left to then district attorney, and this goes to prong number four, risk of influencing and obstructing justice from the crime scene. Jackie, this is Greg. Can you call me as soon as you possibly can? Um, uh, we're, um, my friend and I have been involved in a shooting, and uh, I need some advice right away. Would you please call me as soon as you possibly can? Thank you. Bye. This evidence shows from day one there was an attempt by these defendants to influence and obstruct the investigation of this case. As to all the evidence that was presented from defense's witness regarding Greg McMichael's former employment as Glenn County Law Enforcement, in rebuttal to that, we have the post record States Exhibit 20, which you've heard about today. And I want to be clear on this, Your Honor. I, I am not saying, the state is not saying that the effect of these phone calls and discussions, voicemails to the DA then, um, that, that it had the desired effect. That's not the standard that the court must look at. You must look at whether the defendant had the intention of obstructing and influencing the investigation. And that's the purpose of this evidence, is to show that he wanted to influence and obstruct this. So the standard is post significant risk of intimidating witnesses or obstructing justice. Um, and that's the evidence that we're presenting before the court now. Now, the three men, as you well know, were eventually tried and convicted in November of 2021 for killing Arbery. Now, two months before the verdict, a grand jury indicted Jackie Johnson for her alleged role in delaying that investigation. And Lee Merritt, one of the attorneys for Arbery's family, reacted to her indictment. With regard to uh, Jackie Johnson, what was presented to the grand jury was first evidence that Jackie Johnson had a relationship uh, with with Gregory McMichael, the, the father of the shooter, Travis McMichael, that immediately became involved in the case. The first phone call that Gregory McMichael made from the scene of the shooting was to Jackie Johnson saying, I'm in trouble and I need help. And instead of uh, opting out and saying that she had a conflict, she called the, the subsequent prosecutor, George Barnhill, and began to discuss and get his advice on the case before ultimately referring the case over to him without disclosing to anyone that she had referenced him for this case or that he too had a conflict concerning Gregory McMichael. And so the, the prosecution will show that she violated her oath of office, that Ahmaud Arbery and his family wasn't given a fair shake at justice from the beginning because she put her thumb in the scale by using relationships that she had developed over time. Now, Johnson is being represented by Brian Steele. Does that, same, uh, that, that sound familiar? That's the same attorney who's representing rapper Young Thug in his racketeering trial happening in Georgia right now. 
and no word on when Jackie Johnson's trial could start. And again, it's been delayed over and over because Brian Steele is in fact involved in that Young Thug trial. So it could be some time before we get uh, to trial on that case if in fact it goes to trial. Uh, still with me, of course, is criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor uh, Marie Pereira and also deputy chief of investigations for Gwinnett County, Georgia, Curtis Clements. Again, thanks you guys for being here. And Curtis, I'll start with you. Um, it makes sense to me. You know, it's not odd to me that Greg McMichael would choose to make that phone call first. Um, if you work next to power and you're someone who's in a very similar position to what he was doing, at least at some point in right. your career, you've moved beyond that now. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it makes sense that he would make that call and maybe seek advice or maybe even a little help. Well, as the, the, the top prosecutor in the county, mm -hmm. you have to hold yourself to a higher yes. standard. And what happened here is where do you separate the line between friendship and fair and equitable justice and ensuring that this investigation is transparent mm -hmm. and is untainted by friendship or any other means that will cause this jury or the public to go awry? Yeah. You know, what's interesting, Marie, is as most folks remember, one of the big issues in that case is, remember, you, you heard Lee Merritt talk about a phone call she made to uh, uh, District Attorney Barnio. Eventually, he decided to not press any charges. He saw the video that the world saw and still decided not to press any charges. Again, creating this appearance of impropriety. Big problem in this case. What do you think about these charges? She abused her power. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why Father McMichael called her is to say, you know what? Be part of the good old boys racism club. Mm. I heard this black boy. I didn't do anything, and I need for you to stop this, nip it in the bud. To obstruct justice, mm -hmm. to avoid proper investigation, that's not her job. Her job is to properly investigate and punish who needs to be punished and release who doesn't need to be punished. Yeah. I understand that, but for her to just call off anything and just say don't arrest him everything is fine that is abuse of her power it's a violation of her ethical code as the top prosecutor mm. in the state it's a shame and yeah. it's a good thing that she is being brought to justice yeah. there was intent to obstruct and delay justice and deny justice there yeah. now let's be clear these are allegations right so it still has to be proven in court and that's going to be my question to you curtis um she claimed that these charges should be dismissed because there's not quote a scintilla of evidence against her and i say to this there was a grand jury convened yeah. they decided to indict now again we all know the saying is that you can indict a ham sandwich. sandwich. You don't need a lot of evidence to convince, because again, it's uncontested, and you need just enough to raise the probable cause. So not a lot of evidence, but certainly above the level of a scintilla. Of course, of course. And what you have is, is not just the one phone call, but multiple phone calls. 16 to be exact. 16 <laughs> phone calls between the defendant yes. and the former DA. Yes. Uh, I think it would be hard pressed for anyone to show that you were not influenced through your friendship mm -hmm. in those phone calls to suppress justice in this case. Yeah, Marie, I gotta ask you, let, she says she's, she recused herself almost immediately. She got that call, apparently she did some other calls again, that has to be proven, but there were 16 calls, we know that. At least it went from his phone to her phone. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, we're, we're assuming that they were on the other side of those phones. If they were taken after she recu recused herself, is that still problematic? Should she just have rejected those phone calls and just moved on? You should have told him, I can't help you. Yeah. We need to investigate. Yeah. A proper investigation needs to take place. He called her so that she can nip it in the bud. Yeah. It was a good old boys club. And he thought, you know what? This boy's life is nothing. That's right. And we can say he was racist because yeah. the law says it was motivated by racism. Yeah. So for her to take part in that mm -hmm. makes her complicit. Yeah in the effort to evade justice and deprive that boy of his right to life and someone took his life and she just swept it under the rug that's what he called her to do sweep it under the rug and yeah. she made an effort to do that that alone is enough for her to be held accountable yeah and Greg McMichael, mind, even yeah. though she recused herself from the case almost immediately she still has a large sphere of influence yes. in that area and she can ultimately affect the outcome of that case yeah and from the very beginning and you see the body cam footage of when the cops arrive you could see Greg McMichael working the cops on mm -hmm. the scene being used to being around law enforcement mm -hmm. you could tell he had that mm -hmm. kind of comfort